Well, we, we know what we've got to do now, don't you? What, the, uh, the grand? Severe fucking name dropping now, <laughs> mate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, working for Brian Mason. I mean, I, I'll tell, look, I tell people about some of the stuff that we did at the Greyhound and, you know, and working all over the place, but I ain't sure a lot of them really deep down, believe me, Mick, you know. Um, <clears throat> no, I don't suppose they do, really. I, I don't say nothing to anyone, really. No. Because no. I, I know, what's the point? Yeah. They're not going to believe it. So all the people we mix with, yeah. Rolling Stones, you know, some on stage with Status Quo. Yeah. And uh, David Bowie. Bowie, Bowie, yep. You name it. We, we've uh, yeah. we've met them and, you know, Genesis. Every, yeah, everybody that was big in rock music yep. was at the ground, weren't they? Apart from the Beatles, we never saw the Beatles no. or the Who. Beatles and the Who no. never actually made well, it there. Mind you, the Who was in the Iron Curtain track, weren't they? They was, they yeah. was. But um, we weren't working there at the no, time. No, no. But I think, you know, singing on stage with Quo and Mungo, people like Mungo Jerry. Yeah. You know, and you remember that uh, Mungo Jerry, they used to, um, the bloke had this big flagon of, um, like a, a cider flagon that he used to go, woo, woo, like that. I've blown into that, you know. And uh, he said to me, this, this geezer said to me, I can't, yeah, I don't know who his fucking name was, wouldn't know him from Adam these days. He said, yeah, he said, it took me ages, he said, to get one of these with the right tone. He said, you know, I thought, oh, fuck, if you get the same bloody noise out of a milk bottle, couldn't he? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we've been on we've been, we've done all that haven't we yeah you know? yeah and uh, working at the Greyhound was um, uh, well and other clubs I mean we yeah. it wasn't just a Greyhound we worked Big Apple Big yeah. Apple in Brighton which yeah. is uh, we'll talk a bit more about that in a bit in, in yeah. depth though um, yeah. but um, I'll t working for Mason was one of the one of the funniest experiences of our lives I mean and I, I the one that springs to mind and I was lying in bed. Just the other week, thinking about this, it would just piss myself with laughter. When well, we did the Christmas um, Christmas Eve disco up at the Daylight Inn, <laughs> and um, it wasn't all that far from us. So we're at the Daylight Inn, and it was snowing heavens out, you know, snowing outside. It was a foot of snow, and uh, this disco was packed. And the geezer walked in, and we had the, the cloak rooms. Was um, I don't know if you remember the Daylight Inn. There was the disco was here, and the bar was there, but the, the cloak room was up, actually upstairs in the top top. And um, <clears throat> and I've, I've got a, I've still got this memory in the back of my mind. It was actually Dave Fawn um, was actually up there, and I, I don't know if we wrote Dave Fawn in and uh, Martin um, uh, Martin Joyce. I think we wrote them in to do some work in the, in, on this particular night. And they were giving out raffle tickets as cloakroom tickets. So this bloke walks in this night, and he had the most beautiful, brand new, full length sheepskin coat. That his parents had got him for Christmas. It was a beautiful coat. And at the end of the evening, when everything had packed up and it overran a bit, and everybody was clambering for their coats, and and it was just fucking bedlam. There was people trying to get up this one flight of stairs and down it with coats. There was queues everywhere. Anyway, and it was again, it, it, it was a blizzard outside. And when this fucking geezer, <laughs> when these geezer went to pick his coat up and he's got his ticket in his hand, all that was left was a fucking pack of mac <laughs> <laughs> He hit a fucking roof and his, his old man got on to Mason, got on to Brian Mason and uh, threatened to sue him and all that. I've never seen him like that before in my life. Yeah. But that, that was a funny, but when, when we worked at the Greyhound with all the well, yeah. you name it, Mick. Yeah, you know, know Rod Stewart. Yeah, Stewart. Johnny Wood and the, the faces, yeah. as they were then, as oh. they'd become. Yeah. Because, do you remember when, um, because when, when Stevie Marriott left the small faces, they sort of hit the doldrums a bit, didn't they? Yeah. And uh, they weren't doing too good. And Brian Mason um, put a, let him put a gig on, didn't he? Mm. And uh, the contract they signed, which was a standard Brian Mason contract, had that magic clause in it didn't it that none of them knew about was yeah. that at any time in the future brian could call them back to do another gig for the same money yeah and because what what happens to the faces rod stewart joins them maggie may yeah so brian mason straight away on the <laughs> phone come back please yeah yeah and uh they had the hump over it didn't they oh. or they didn't like it at all because they were big time then weren't they yeah back in the big time yeah and uh, Rod Stewart turned up hour and a half late, didn't he? Hour and a half late. 
and because uh, the crowd were going mad, weren't they? Yeah. Rightly so, you know, they paid their money. Because yeah. you, you had to get out of that building, didn't you? Yeah. Because the manager, you know, it was a manager. It was 11 o'clock, like, what was that? Actually, it was half past 10 last year, so it was a Sunday. 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 Yeah, Sunday that's night. right, yeah. Mm. Well, because Rod Stewart goes out in the, uh, in the changing room, in, out, out the back, didn't he? And they, he refused to go on, didn't he? So yeah. they, they fucking lynch me if I go out there. <laughs> and I'm Stevie Mason, got him by the throat up against yeah, the walls. You're, you're going to fucking get out there now. <laughs> And he went out there, and they put a, they put a great show on, didn't they? they? And they overran a bit, didn't they? Yeah. Aye. Right. And because overrunning comes trouble, didn't it? So we was, I remember we, was in, we were in the bar all having a drink afterwards, and there was, uh, there was Ronnie Lane and Ronnie Wood. And we used to drink quite regularly with Ronnie Wood after that. If yeah. you remember, Danny yeah. used to pop in and, uh, uh, and have a beer with us quite on a regular basis. And Rod Stewart was there, and, and then Mason comes out. Go on, tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Not only was he getting Rod Stewart in the faces on the cheek, yeah. just after Maggie Murray, he docked them money, didn't he? Because they overran. Yeah, and and he's they? got expenses. <laughs> I've got expenses to pay. And I, we never got fuck all, did we? No, we weren't, we weren't the extra, but we never got nothing. Yeah. So, uh, Ronnie Wood was, I don't know if he was pissed, drugged up, or what. Oh, it was, he went, really he went for serve, didn't he? Yeah, he had a, oh, he had a, a jug of beer, he had a lager, it was half yeah, full, yeah. and he threatened Brian, didn't he? Yeah. And Brian, there was me, you and Martin Odston standing behind him, weren't we? Yeah. Oh, and Brian funny. said, I wouldn't start if I was you, I've got my, I can't got my, my team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we was a team, weren't we? Back yeah. in a and good I'm fight thinking, away out of a paper bag. And I'm thinking, fuck me, I'm going to be fighting <laughs> Ronnie Wood. <laughs> And the thing is, they were flying out to Spain the following morning and they needed the cash, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>